Coming up next, we got a Fox 9 special. Yeah, it is the deadliest threat women face, which is why this is National Go Red Month. Here's some extraordinary stories and find out what you can do to prevent heart disease. The numbers are mind blowing. Women just like you and me are dying at the rate of one per minute, all because of heart disease. Now on this Fox 9 Go Red special, inspiring stories, the risks, and how to prevent them. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Fox 9 Go Red special. As you've probably heard by now, February is American Heart Month, a perfect time to educate yourself and others on making heart healthy choices in your life. The American Heart Association launched Go Red for Women seven years ago, and the movement has caught fire. Their mission to make sure that you know heart disease is the number one killer of women, taking the life of one in three women each year. That breaks down to about one woman per minute. And get this, 90% of women have one or more of the risk factors. You may be wearing red right now to support the Go Red movement, whether it's a red tie or a red colored blazer. You are showing your support for the fight against this silent killer. And there are lots of reasons to go red today and every day. Maybe you have a close friend, a family member with heart issues. Maybe you have heart problems. I want to introduce you now to Keely Miller, the local winner of the Go Red casting call in 2010, a strong woman with an amazing story. You're silly. Come on. When it comes to matters of the heart, newlyweds Keely and Jason Miller are experts. The couple got married in November 2009. Less than a month later, Keely was added to the heart transplant list. You're knocking on death's door, you know, basically. So I thought about all the good times. I really thought about our, our, our wedding and meeting my husband and, mm -hmm. you know, hoping that there was a future ahead of us. But the couple never took the honeymoon they'd always dreamed of. At just 30 years old, Keely was having congestive heart failure. By January, my husband was doing all my basic care needs for me. He had to help me shower, put my shoes on, socks. I went in with the mindset of, all right, do we have a good team, first of all? We felt that we had a good team. I said, all right, we're going to do what we can and whatever you tell us to do so we can get her healthy again. But her condition went downhill fast, and Keeley checked into the hospital to stay alive. They needed to put a pick line mm -hmm. in and pump a very potent drug directly into my heart to keep it beating for me until, you know, hopefully a, a donor came along. Nearly a year later, Keeley's healthy, living with a brand new heart and back to doing the things she loves, like spending time with her babies, JJ and Redneck. These guys came and visited me every day when I was in the hospital. Thank you, bud. And although Keeley's body took the new heart with little rejection, wrapping her mind around the gift, as she calls it, wasn't easy. It's hard to explain, but it's, I still have a hard time saying from the bottom of my heart, or I love you with all my heart, because it's not my heart. Keeley doesn't know anything about her donor, but says someday she'd like to reach out to that person's family. For now, she's taking the advice of one of her doctors. He said, you know, Keeley, the only way you're going to feel better is to just start living your life, girl. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he said, you've lived long enough for your heart. Let your heart start living for you now. And that starts with a long overdue honeymoon. The young couple is planning a trip to California in March on the one year anniversary of Keeley's transplant. Spend the time that we really didn't have together. You know, she wasn't supposed to be here. She's here, so we're going to take every advantage of it we can. Wow, what an inspiration. Would you like to be the next Go Red spokesperson like Keeley, the Mall of America, hosting a casting call from 11 to 4 tomorrow in Macy's Court? Just wear red and be ready to share your story in front of the camera. You can also share your story online at GoRedWomen.org. Joining us now is Angela Craig, Twin Cities Go Red Chair and Vice President of the Corporate Relations and Human Resources at St. Jude Medical. Thank you so much for being here. You have had a very big year. You are the chair for the Go Red campaign, and it's been a good year. We just had the luncheon. What is Go Red? 
Well, Go Red really is the American Heart Association's activities around raising awareness of heart disease in women. Uh, in particular, Marnie, as you know, one in three Americans will develop heart disease. And women, it's an area where we really can raise both awareness and funds to do further research. And that's what we've been doing here locally. Why is it so important that we get this message across that heart disease is the number one killer? Fourteen women today in Minnesota will die of heart disease. We still don't have the message completely out there that heart disease is the number one killer of women. So until we accomplish that and until we understand how heart disease affects women and how that's different from men, mm -hmm. it, it's really an important area we continue to uh, focus on. That's right. And research, and it takes a lot of money to make sure that people know and are aware of what's going on. How can they get involved? Well, Go Red is really a movement that is taking hold across the country. It's only eight years old, mm -hmm. and so as we think about both from an awareness level and a research level, there are a number of ways we can get involved. The, the truth is that heart disease is largely preventable. About 80% of heart disease is preventable, and so as we get to know uh, what our risk factors are as we learn how we can uh, exercise, how we can change our diets, how we can check our cholesterol levels. As we understand what the mechanisms for heart disease are, we can take a proactive approach. And in the meantime, we do need to raise money. I'm so pleased with the, the level of funding and support that we've received here in the Twin Cities locally because that's 540,000 more dollars that can go to heart disease research. That's amazing. And how is that money specifically spent? Where is the money going? The money's going specifically to research for women uh, so we can understand better exactly the mechanisms for uh, prevention, for detection, and for treatment for women in heart disease. Mm -hmm. And what more can we do? I mean, you hear so often that uh, the numbers and the force behind breast cancer right. awareness is so strong, and that's wonderful, mm -hmm. but how do we make sure that heart disease is just as recognizably a deadly disease. Well, I think the first step is to recognize that we all have responsibility for ourselves. And so taking action and understanding your own risk factors, making changes that aren't so easy. Uh, I know this week and the week before, I've been uh, tortured by a trainer every, we every week. Yeah. But I'm, I'm changing my own life. I'm starting with myself and with my own family and getting involved with the American Heart Association, making the effort to learn how you can reduce the risk factors for yourself your family, and getting involved in our community. It starts with you. Angela Craig, thank you, the 2011 uh, chair for Twin Cities Go Red. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And coming up next, heart disease doesn't just hurt women. It hits men, too. Another incredible survival story when this Fox 9 Go Red special continues. But first, the Go Red movement will be everywhere tomorrow at the Mall of America. You can check out a fashion show, get free health screenings, go to fitness and cooking demonstrations, and also, as we mentioned, audition for the Go Red casting call. It starts at 11 a.m. at the Mall of America. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this Fox 9 Go Red special. The Go Red movement is picking up a lot of steam. Today, 57% of women know that heart disease is their number one killer. That's up from 30% back in 1997. But as most Go Red supporters will tell you, more progress needs to be made. It is my pleasure to be here today and to help spread the word and do as much as we can to make sure that we all make changes in our lives. I do my best. Part of it is raising awareness. Just last week, I had the privilege of hosting the annual Twin Cities Go Red Lunch and Learn. Hundreds of the Twin Cities top women executives packed the Hilton Hotel in Bloomington to help raise awareness and money for research against heart disease. We were able to raise more than $500,000 at that lunch. The event also included workshops and a day of very inspiring stories. So thanks to everybody for your support. And as we've mentioned, heart disease doesn't just affect women. Men suffer from it, too. What we knew was uh, somebody had found uh, a person down. Al Sai will be the first to tell you every second counts. My heart stopped. We're really lucky that I, I'm alive now. Two years ago, at just 37 years old, Al collapsed on the sidewalk outside his office in St. Paul. Two complete strangers saw what happened, called 911, and started CPR. It took paramedics just a few minutes to get there. Al's brain wasn't getting oxygen. At Regent's Hospital, um, Al was in a coma. You know, what she went through is still is something that I, I struggle with a lot. 
because she was there by my side, not knowing if I was going to wake up. If you go by statistics, and by the way, Al doesn't, his sudden cardiac arrest could have killed him or left him with severe brain damage. But it didn't. The husband and father of two now has a defibrillator and is otherwise healthy. And a big reason why, Al says, two strangers that stopped to help when others just kept walking. You know, thinking about that, what, what they did, they saved my life, for sure, no doubt. The, the key thing is you just can't be afraid. I mean, I was going to die, so how much worse could, it, could you make it if you just tried to, to do something? Yeah. They saved my husband, my family, my whole life. If they hadn't been there, I hadn't done that. I can't imagine what would have happened, what our life would be like today. Yeah, I'm blessed with with a family and um, I with a home and it's it's really it makes you put your life into perspective of what's really important and to make sure that you live every day like it's your last. Joining us now is Dr. Arkel Giorgio. Thank you for being here. Important topic, heart disease, the number one killer. So what are the warning signs that we need to be looking for? This is for men and for women. Well, the classic signs of a heart attack are pressing chest pain. And it can be right in the center of the chest. It can radiate down the arm and up to the jaw. So that's the most classic. Mm -hmm. But you can also have shortness of breath with or without the chest pain, or you can have some other much more vague symptoms like nausea, feeling like you're a little lightheaded. Mm -hmm. And those are the classic symptoms most common in men and women, but certainly not the only ones. And women typically have different symptoms. Yeah, and timing is everything too, despite men or women getting help when you notice that something is wrong. Oh my goodness, time is muscle. So what is a heart attack? It's a blockage of blood flow to the heart muscle. Mm -hmm. And blood flow means it carries oxygen. If you don't have oxygen, that heart muscle will die. So time is muscle and getting care and treatment as quickly as possible is critical. Yeah, and recognizing, we, we're talking about the similarities between men and women, but recognizing the differences also in some of the symptoms and signs. And then also more women are likely to die from a heart attack than men. That's right. So what are the different symptoms of a heart attack in women? You know, over 50% of women don't have that classic pressing chest pain. Mm -hmm. They actually get flu-like symptoms, so they just don't feel very good. Mm -hmm. And they're much more likely to brush the symptoms off to being stressed, to being tired. They frequently get indigestion, so they'll just feel guilty that they ate too much pizza the night before. Yeah. Actually, they're having a heart attack. And for that reason, there's a delay in getting to care. And that's why more women die after having a heart attack than men. In fact, twice as many women die than men. Wow, amazing. We're trying to do too much, it sounds like. Well, we don't recognize the symptoms mm -hmm. ourselves. And when we get to the hospital or the emergency room, the doctors aren't trained to listen to women's distinct symptoms. But you know what's really discouraging to me is that even when it's clear that women are having a heart attack, mm -hmm. they're li less likely to get clot-busting drugs, mm -hmm. and they're less likely to get medications that keep you from having a second heart attack. Why? I wish I could answer that question. But the statistics are there that we get less aggressive treatment than men. That's unfortunate, very unfortunate. That's once you're at the hospital and you have all of the symptoms. Absolutely. Crazy. Uh, so what do we need to do, first off, listen to our bodies, but then to take better care of ourselves? We've been hearing for years that we need to do this, and we know what we need to be doing, but what are the steps, you know, as a doctor, when you talk to your patients, you have to do this. It's the matter between life and death. Well, I take it in steps. So prevention is key, and we talk all the time about don't smoke, have a healthy diet, have a healthy weight. Mm -hmm. But the second part is know your numbers. Don't rely on your doctor to keep track of what your cholesterol is, is, what your blood sugar is, what your blood pressure is. You should know those numbers and they should be on the tip of your tongue so that you can be very conscious of whether or not you're at risk for a heart attack or not. Mm -hmm. The next thing is know the symptoms that are unique to women so that if you're having those symptoms, you aren't waiting hours and hours and losing wonderful heart muscle yep. while you're waiting to go to the emergency room. So know the symptoms and when you go to that emergency room, you advocate for yourself. Don't let anyone brush you off. 
And I don't mean to imply that the medical system does that intentionally, but if you think you're having a heart attack, you keep pressing for more and more diagnosis and treatment and specialists until you're satisfied that you're getting the care you deserve. Fight for yourself. Dr. Giorgio, thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Giorgio was talking about taking precautions to make sure you don't become a victim of heart disease. Straight ahead on this Fox 9 special, seven easy to understand measures called Life's Simple Seven. Joining us now is Pat Garrity, President and CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota and the Twin Cities My Life Check. Thank you for being here. So explain to us what My Life Check is. So My Life Check is a tool from the American Heart Association that allows us to look at uh, the different factors that uh, impact cardiovascular health. Mm -hmm. How did it get started? Well, it got started because um, many Americans act, absolutely think that they're doing better or are more heart healthy mm -hmm. uh, than they really are. So when a survey went out, about 40% of people said that they were in optimal uh, cardiovascular health. The fact of the matter is it's about 1%. Mm -hmm. So not enough people are doing enough. So, so how do we get started? You have something called the Simple 7 that we need to be looking at. Yes, the Simple 7 actually is made up of four behaviors. So being physically active, uh, eating well, managing your weight and not smoking are really the four behaviors mm -hmm. and then there are clinical measurements and the clinical measurements are knowing your blood pressure knowing your cholesterol and knowing your blood sugar and managing those levels yeah well you think about how much people know about their jobs or about their kids but when you ask them to know their numbers and know all of this information a lot of people probably couldn't recite all of that back to you so it's very important and it seems as far as you're saying it all goes hand in hand you can't do one without the other absolutely and we do believe that information is power mm -hmm. and awareness is the first step in making a change so uh, life simple seven allows people to very simply uh, be in touch with the measures that are important for their cardiovascular health and then take some action related to that. Yeah, what's your advice on taking action that first step? Well, you know, one of the things that's very interesting about uh, taking the uh, Life Simple 7 and My Life Check is that when you go on there, it gives you specific advice depending upon how your scores fall out in the study. Mm -hmm. So it really, I would say, being active and, and starting down that pathway is the most important thing. And then really looking at what you're eating and trying to move the health of the things that you're eating on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. How can people find all of this information? Where is My Life Check? So you can go online and find that. So uh, My Life Check can either be something I looked at it on Google and just put My Life Check in there and mm -hmm. it comes up. Uh, so you can find that online. And the other thing is you might want to come to the uh, Mall of America on Saturday mm -hmm. where the American Heart Association has a number of activities going on, including the opportunity to get screenings done while you're there. Because most people say, I know certain things, but I don't know all my yeah. test numbers. You can have that done while you're there. Good advice. Pat Garrity, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Marty. Appreciate your time. And if you want to see how to eat healthy, head to the Mall of America tomorrow. You can enjoy live cooking demonstrations in both the Bloomington's Court and Nordstrom's Court. They're taking place between 11 and 4, and all of the demonstrations are free. Sarah Bernstein joins us now. She is a registered dietitian with Health East Woodwinds, and she's here to talk to us about proper nutrition. And also, so many of us, when we go to the grocery store, we don't know how to shop. We don't know how to look at labels. So what's your advice? Well, as we all need to know our blood work numbers for cholesterol, we also need to know what we're looking for on the food label. And they can be really confusing mm -hmm. with what we're looking for. The three things you want to look at are um, fat, total fat grams, saturated fat, we want to see how much fiber is coming from the product mm -hmm. and how much cholesterol and sodium. So that's kind of the list of things we need to look for. And some tips on should we look at the daily value, should we look at the grams. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's easiest just to look at the grams of fat. And if we know that our total should be around 50 to 60 grams, if that product has 20, it might be a little high. And a quick and easy tip is mm -hmm. doing 3 grams per every 100 calories. That way we know it's about the right ratio for what we should be looking for. Yeah. The type of fat is really important too because not all fat is good for us. There mm -hmm. is some good fat out there. Right. Um, we want to avoid the saturated fat and that has been linked with raising your bad cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. So the lower we can get with the saturated fat the better yeah. and staying with around 10 grams or less a day mm -hmm. for saturated fat. 
What are the things we don't want? I mean, the saturated fat, but there are other things. We've heard a lot about sodium lately, too, that we want to limit the amount of salt so, that we're getting. Uh, what, are, what are things we want to avoid? So salt is a big one. The yeah. American population eats about six grams of sodium every day, and we want to keep that around two grams a day. So looking at that label, we want to look for about two grams or, or less for the whole day, but we want to look for about 240 milligrams per serving um, or less at a time. Yeah. The Heart Association makes it really easy to check your numbers. There's the heart check on the box and mm -hmm. it's a Heart Association um, check mark that talks about regulating the foods for total fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium mm -hmm. and fiber. So everything we're looking for is right there and it regulates the amount per gram of the product. Oh, they take out a lot of the they work for do. us. That's very good. What about substitutions? We can substitute a lot of stuff to still make it taste good. We can. So with the good and bad fats, we're trying to avoid the saturated fat, but we're trying to boost up actually the plant-based fat, in particular the omega-3 plant mm -hmm based fats okay. and those come from olive oil, canola oil, all our fish oils. So when you're eating at a restaurant, for example, choosing the fish over the beef or the steak would be a great start. Mm -hmm. And then looking at how many things we can switch out on the fat products like our sour cream. Instead choosing the guacamole. The guacamole has avocado, which is a heart healthy fat, okay. and some olive oil. Oh, that's good. So little tips. And also doing things like if you really want that burger, buffalo or bison is a little leaner, mm -hmm. um, like chicken would be. And chicken, of course, and turkey mm -hmm. are always good choices without the skin. Wow, Sarah Bernstein, good tips. And I'm hungry now, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Over the course of this 30-minute special, 30 women have died from heart disease. 30. One every single minute. Unbelievable and largely preventable. Make a change and make it now. Remember, if you want to get involved tomorrow, head to the Mall of America or log on to GoRedForWomen.org. Thank you for joining us. I'm Marnie Hughes. Fox at 10 is next.